Hello, my name is Professor Benavides, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about getting input from the user in Python, as well as repetition structures. So uh, I've been using um, Sublime Text because it's really simple to use as my text editor, but it can't handle uh, user input. So I'm going to go ahead and use Visual Studio. Code. So Visual Studio Code is really easy to use. Just get your, once you install the extensions, you be, should be ready to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a file save right now. And um, actually do a, a, let's try that out, file new and file save. And we'll go ahead and call this uh, interest you. And let's see if it puts the PY extension on here. I think it does. And let's look for Python on here. So that's at least one thing that <laughs> Visual Studio Code does better than um, Sublime Text, besides Sublime Text not being able to handle input. So there it is. I'm going to do a little demo on um, an interest due application uh, in order to demonstrate the concepts of uh, input, getting input from the user, and using um, a file structure. But the first thing I want to talk about here is the, is the fact that everything that comes in from the input function is a string. If you want to get a string from the user, fine. Like if I ask you, what's your name? You say, Bob, that's fine. But what if I ask you, how old are you? I mean, I can get, you know, 20 in as a string, but then I can't do math on it. Let me go ahead and, and, and prove what, what I'm uh, talking about here. Uh, so I can say, uh, name gets input. And I'll get to our application just in a minute, but I just wanted to, ver uh, I just wanted to go ahead and and um, make sure that we understand that everything that comes in from the input function is a string. Okay, so I'm just going to say name, right? And then I'm just going to go ahead and print it. That well, should be pretty easy uh, idea. Let me go ahead and run this. So I got a little error here, strangely enough. Uh, what happened here? Oh, how did I, how did I, how do you know how I put in that backslash in there? So let's go ahead and put that in again. All right, so name. Now the interface is not the greatest here, but th that's just the way it is. You gotta get used to it. So Bob, and I probably should have put a space after the question mark, and then it just says Bob. And the space I'm talking about here is if, uh, if you put in a space after the question mark and run it again, it looks a little bit better, and that it's not, your blinking cursor is, is not right next to the question mark. See? All right. So uh, what about if I ask for uh, age? And let's use that type method to see what's coming in. and feed it age, okay? Now, if you want to have that as a string, that's fine, but if you ever want to do any math on it, you're, not, you're going to have some troubles with it. So it's got name, Bob, age. So it repeats 65, but guess what? Um, age is a string. So, um, you know, what, what would happen if I, you know, for example, ask for one number and then another number. Of course, I could put that in num1 and num2. Let's say that I want to go ahead and add those two together.
And I guess I might as well just print out the, the type of num1. You know, it'd be the same for num2. So let's see if, if everything turns out okay. So num1, I'll put in a 10. Oop, not there, but down here below with the prompt. And um, uh, let's see now, what did it didn't like? Name is not defined on, on line two. Oh, yeah, okay, here. Should have said. And actually, I don't even need that line, right? Because basically, I just want to show uh, the concatenation uh, idea here. All right. So let's go ahead and run that again. So num1 is 10, num2 is 20. So now it, it what happens here is it concatenates. So I get 10, 20 instead of numbers. So how would I do that? Uh, I would then go ahead and I would have to convert it to a numeric. I, if I want to convert it to a float, I'd use float method or a float function, or if I want to convert it to an int, then I would use the int function. Let's say something like this, right? So whatever is in the internal parenthesis would happen first, and then it passes that as an argument to the function int, okay? Okay, so let me go ahead and, and run this. Maybe I'll have better luck. So in num1, 10, num2, 20. Now it says 30, and it says that num1 is an int. So hopefully now you understand um, a little bit more about the input function. We can go ahead and get into our demo application for today. All right, uh, so today's application is to calculate interest on a loan. And um, I'm going to uh, ask the user for dollars, interest rate, and the loan amount. I'm going to use the input, uh, the input um, function to get it. I'm going to convert it into numeric and then put it in a formula, you know, and then spit it out into some kind of output. Now, but I'm going to want to use a loop to acquire this information. Uh, in other words, I want to be able to, to let the user decide whether he wants he or she wants to run the calculation again. So these prompts are going to be enclosed in a, a while statement. All right. So first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and put the name of the program up at the top. You know, I like to put the names of the programs at the top. Calculate interest on a loan classic program, right? I think everybody's done this one. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to need to, to uh, um, create a Boolean condition here or something that we refer to as a flag that I'm going to use inside of the loop to see if the user wants to repeat or not. Okay, so I'm going to say repeat gets true. It's a Boolean condition. Okay. So we're going to set the repeat flag to true. And then we're going to go ahead and um, start our while statement. So we'll say while repeat. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then prompt. We're going to then show, uh, 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 put it into an equation, show the results. And then we're going to ask, hey, uh, do you want to do another calculation? OK. Now that's pretty much the program. So uh, inside here, um, let's say um, a lot of people start with the, the prompt this way, and then they move to the, to the format that I just showed you. But this is the way beginners typically start. So they'll do something like this. So amount gets input. And they say, they pass it the string and they say, backslash n, how many dollars do you wish to borrow? Okay? Space. I think it's important to have that space after that question mark, otherwise it looks uh, you know, too crunched up. So that comes in as a string. So the next step would be to go ahead and then say amount 
again gets float and pass them out. So, yeah. So you start with this idea and then you move on to saying, you know what, I could probably uh, do that all in one line. So let's do that all in one line idea on the next one. So we're going to get interest rate gets, in this particular case, we know it's going to go into a float and that float is going to receive the, um, the, re uh, the return from the input statement. And the input statement, we're going to then go ahead and say, what is the interest rate? Make sure you I put that little space after that question mark. So that did those two lines above all in one line. Let's do that again for year or years, the years of the loan. Those are three, these are the three things that we'll need to put into the equation. Like, you know, how many years do you want the loan for? Stuff like that, you know? So we'll do uh, this one, we'll make it an int. So we'll say input, and then we'll say how many years would you take the loan? Based after that question mark. All right, so now after the prompts, I'm gonna put those into my equation. We'll call the return total interest. And that would get, that would be the uh, amount times the interest rate divided by 100 times years. All right. After the equation, then we'll have our output. Okay, so I'll say output gets, and we'll do a formatted string here. So we'll do a, new line and then we'll say if you borrow and we're going to format the um, the variables to a uh, dollar amount but i'll do that afterwards I'll, I'll put the placeholders in and then i'll go back and format it i usually do, do the formatting after i i get output so the placeholder in this particular case is amount if you borrow that amount at an interest rate of another placeholder. And we'll say interest rate. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the little parenthesis uh, thingy on there. I'm going to go ahead and press enter. And then I'm going to repeat this again. And I'm going to use the shortcut abbreviated operator here and what this does is it the next line the next uh, the next string will be added to the string above okay so it's kind of like concatenating right the string start with another new line for and then the years another placeholder so we're building a sentence you know feedback and sometimes uh, uh, students get uh, or uh, get confused with that's the variable name, but then we're going to put years in the string, right? You will pay, and this and then we'll put in the placeholder for the last variable. In interest. Period. Okay. All right, pressing enter. So now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and print that output. All right. So that happens for each person. So now, I mean, for each person, that happens every time you iterate. So now I got to ask, hey, do you want to run the calculation again? All right. So I'm going to say, um, in this particular case, I'm going to ask for again. Um, so I'm going to say again, gets input and say backslash n. Would you like to run another calculation? And let's go ahead and 
give them a hint that they will be entering a Y or an N. All right. So then I'll perform a test here. So I will say if again is equal to, remember that's two equal signs, is equal to N, then what? Well, notice how when I pressed enter, I went right underneath that if. That's wrong. And that's because I forgot to put in the colon. So you put in the colon, press enter, and it takes you right to where you need to be for the indentation. So if you don't indent right, you're going you're to get either syntax error or logic error. Okay? So we'll say repeat gets false. And true and false always start with a capital letter. It's Boolean. Okay? All right, well, the, uh, uh, that's pretty much the program finished now, but now notice that when I press enter here, let's say I want to say goodbye. I don't want to put this inside the loop. I have to um, make sure I go all the way to the left on here so that it, this is acknowledged as not being inside the loop and, and say goodbye. Okay, so we'll say print and say, then I'll say um, backslash n, thanks for using this program, period, goodbye. All right, let me just look it over to make sure everything looks, uh, looks right. So I, I specify the name of the program, I set my flag to true, and I'm going to go ahead and repeat as long as, 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 long as, as repeat is true. So it comes in here as repeat is true. So then I ask her, would you like uh, to run another calculation? You know, uh, so if they put in a Y, they're going to repeat. Actually, if you notice there, if you touch any, any character besides N, it seems like, let me try it out, right? Because the only thing you test for is if again is equal to N. You know, so if you type in N O, well, that's not going to work out, is it? So in this particular case, if again is equal to N, then repeat is set to false. Now notice how I used one equal sign here. This is an assignment statement. This is the test for equality, all right? So you're saying if again is equal to n, then set repeat to false, which will cause the loop to terminate because it will only terminate on truth and it will exit on false. When it exits, it'll go to this last line and say, Thanks for using this program. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and run it and, and make sure I spelled everything right. Um, and 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 uh, let's do that. Okay, so here's my not the best interface uh, on here. Uh, Visual Studio. It starts right here. Program calculate interest on the loan. How many dollars do you wish to borrow? Two thousand dollars. What is the interest rate? 6%. How many years? 10 years. So, oh, look at that. I forgot to, remember I said I was going to, I was going to format this for currency. I forgot to do that. So I'm going to say, so if you borrow $2,000 at an interest rate of 6% uh, for 10 years, you will pay uh, $1,200 in interest. Would you like another uh, a calculation? You know, so I'm going to say no. All right, so then it says goodbye. It says goodbye in the right place. So what I want to do now is I want to um, format amount and the total interest so that it shows up like currency. So the way we do that here, or the way I do it, there are different ways of doing this. I'm going to put the dollar sign right in front of there. Of course, that I still don't get the comma and the two decimal places that I require. So to format this, I put in a colon to signify that what follows will be formatting. I put in a comma, and that'll be the pattern. It'll put the, uh, the, the comma separator. I put in a period. The 2F means that I'm going to have two decimal places to the, to the right of the number. And I'm going to do the same thing down over here. So put in the dollar sign. Go to the end of the uh, variable. Put in the colon to signify. Uh, that you're going to format it, comma dot two f. Now let's go ahead and run this again and verify that it's that it's working uh, right. Now 
when you run it again, it, it shows the previous run. If that confuses you, what you may want to do is just press the delete thingy on here that kills it so that when you run it, it runs it afresh and it doesn't have that previous stuff from the past. Okay, because sometimes you may be looking at the code and say, well, uh, that's from the previous one. So it looks a little confusing. So let's do 2000 again. Interest rate 6%, 10, 10 years. Now it looks better. Okay. Um, another, let's test the, the uh, uh, iteration. So if I, we already tested the N. So if I press Y, how many dollars you want to borrow? Uh, let's borrow $5,000, right? Interest rate, why not 10% for 10 years, right? So we'll go ahead and pay $5,000. You may want to put this into a calculator to see if, uh, if it's working right. Uh, but I think it is. So now all I have to do is just say N for no, and I've completed um, this little test of this application that I built to demonstrate getting input from the user. Now this input in this one here gets, gets a string and converts it to a number. It converts it by using either the uh, int method or the float method. And uh, we pass the, the return from the input function, which returns a string, okay? Because if you don't do that, you know, remember I showed you before, you end up concatenating two strings rather than adding them up. Or in this case, I'm putting them into a formula. And who knows what would I end up getting, right? So that's pretty much the end of, of this application on here. Uh, and, and uh, you know, once you know how to do input, I mean, you can go ahead and apply this to a lot of applications. You know, that where you need to, to, instead of doing assignment statements, you can just be asking the user for, for like dollars and interest rates or whatever it is that you need to, to make your equation and show output. The only thing you need to remember is that it comes in as a string, you need to convert it. And then lastly, you need to remember what kind of text editor am I going to use? Uh, if your favorite editor is, is a Sublime Text, you need to remember that so when you click run uh, in Sublime Text for this application, you're not gonna get very far, right? So that is why I, en when, uh, I ended up using um, uh, you know, Visual Studio Code, uh, which is, an, is um, one of the most popular uh, editors for, for Python uh, today. So other than that, that's my little demo on input and using a while loop.